Hello, remnant of the Most High God, and welcome to another edition of the Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. KIB's purpose is to provide an intelligence briefing for the body of Messiah that will both inform and empower the remnant in the last days. We want you to know that you're not alone. There are more of us than you realize, and the ranks of the resistance against Mystery of Babylon are growing all around the world. This is episode number 354. I'm your host, Dr. Michael Lake, and I'm in the KIB studio today with the love of my life, Mary Lou. Hey, everyone. Um, I guess you all are grieving with us over this last shooting with all these little babies that were killed, and it's just been so horrible to think about what those families are going through, and I know you're praying with them just like we are for God to comfort them and take them through this horrible time, and for all of us to look at this situation, and and you just have to question things. You know, I these were things that I noticed that were, uh, as they started reporting things, that that outside door where that shooter went through was supposed to be locked, and it was propped open by a, a teacher minutes before that shooter entered. He just happened to know what door to go in. Wasn't that an odd occurrence i also think it's odd that you know he had he had wrecked his truck he had fired shots out by a funeral home so there were shots fired 12 minutes later from the timeline that they're they're giving it it took him to get to the school to scale that eight foot fence you know i I was thinking like whether just like because it's a small town okay so let's say similar to marshfield or similar to seymour in 12 minutes after shots were report being fired the police would have already been there, and he should have never reached the school. I mean, just that part. There's there's some odd there's, things there's that a make lot you of question. Things. And um, you know, years ago, um, I I learned about all the programming cues. And this is this is a young kid, and you'd think, well, um, I think he's he's of Hispanic descent, right? Yes. Um, and you'd think, well, how could somebody pro program some you know someone there that age and have them do this, but I, I don't know that they can't do this through video games and through through other means. You know, used to it took trauma to get somebody yeah. in a mind control state, but I, I don't know that it does anymore. And I, I just thought it was odd that he went to room 111 and 112. And when I first started learning about the programming and things like that and with what I experienced... I knew that 111, 222, 333 were triggers. They're based on, um, you know, a lot of times they'll use that on the clock uh, to, tri- you know, trigger someone. And I just thought how odd that was that that was the room that he went to. Well, and I, you know, when I look at it, this is, there, I, I believe there's no such thing as a perfect storm. Mm-hmm. Okay, this this is a perfect storm of of of, of events. So the we had a teacher prop the door open while there's shots being fired outside the school because they said that he was firing shots you know at different times. So uh, if if you're walking with this within uh, twelve minutes, you can hear shots being fired. Okay, especially from from a from a rifle. Th- this is a perfect storm of, of incompetency, which I don't I don't think just happens, and it just. There, there are so many questions, and I, I think some. Although we have some reporters asking tough questions, mm-hmm. I don't think they're asking all the right questions. Well, and it, you know, it's all these things are um, lending themselves to the liberals' agenda of taking the guns away, and you know, from from just a a logical standpoint, you look and you think somebody that age shouldn't have an AR-15. Isn't that what he used? Or a thirty thirty, or I, um, you know, personally. You know, so there, there's. I think they shouldn't have anything more than a 22 until they're 21 years old. And on the other side of the the argument is, well, they're gonna if they're gonna go on a spree, they're gonna find a gun anyway, and it would be pretty easy to get a gun illegally. But if it's it's just too much, you know. Back in 1998, um, it was when there was so much going on in 1998 with the mind control and how they had to keep everybody online to keep the agenda going. They even had a plane crash. It was Flight 111. And I remember it because I was talking to a program multiple on the phone. And um, I, I thought, would, they, would, they, would somebody crash a plane 
just to get an agenda done. I think mm-hmm. they I think evil people would. I don't I don't think they they value human life at all. And so so you'd think could this have been a planned thing? I think it could have. I, I have one of the things the first thing that went through my mind is who told this police chief from some NGO or unlettered government agency stand down. I, I, I've wondered. I mean, I because just I it, can't imagine not rushing that place to save any child. I mean, you know, I guess they're making an assumption he shot everybody, and there there were kids making calls. They said, which which Wouldn't which you, would immediately would have end the assumption, and they would have. It's okay, guys, going in. If that was training, then I would have not been a good trained officer because if there were kids that were getting shot, I'd have just done whatever I had to do. Well, they showed I'd have just I'd have just broke windows. I'd have got in. I'd have, they showed that just in March they had received training and went through drills for the, the, something like this happening, and they went absolutely opposite of everything that they had been trained to do. I thought it was odd, too, that this was just so close to that NRA convention. Mm-hmm. And I don't know if you guys saw um, the stunt with Beto O'Rourke, but if there was ever a political stunt, that was one. <laughs> I mean, it's it just... What what just absolutely blows you away, and when you have to look at this, and we've had to look at it for years, is how little value these evil people place on life, and and you got to figure now at the root of what um, this evil's been built on, with this agenda that they have is is based on child sacrifice, so it shouldn't surprise any of us that they would be willing to sacrifice anybody for an agenda, but it, it just, it's just hard to comprehend because you just think it's the most normal thing for a human with how God made us to protect the young. Yeah. That, that, that should be instinctual. And uh, yeah, it's not the, 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 um, the left of coming league uh, have been infected with communism. And one, in fact, uh, a good friend of mine, Dr. John Gar, sent me an article this morning. I just quickly perused, and it was on the American Thinker. And he said, "What's wrong with the nation when educators destroy knowledge, the press destroys information, the uh, the political arena, the government destroys freedom, and religion is destroying morals?" That that's where we are right uh, now. It in America. is. It's it's a sad state, and our only hope is God. Yes, and His mercy, because. We are so lined up for judgment in every conceivable way that only the mercy of God can save us. Um, because most most people would look at this and think, this is worse than Sodom and Gomorrah. Mm-hmm. This, is, this is unbelievable evil um, that they couldn't have even done back then because they didn't have technology and, and all of the things that they, they use. But, and it just, it just, so infuriates me what they get done. And a lot of the reason they get it done is because people don't understand the background of it. They just look at it and they and they just think, okay, this is another event. But if you understand what's at the, the root of this and how they've done this from the formation of America on, you just sit back and you think, only God, only God. And I believe that he can um, I believe that God can turn this around, but at the same time, there, it's not going to be easy to untangle and rip out the evil to save a place. You know, that's why in, in the Old Testament you see so many times they're just wiped out because they've been, um, you know, the, the bloodlines were tainted. They were, they were, the Nephilim were messing with, with all these, these people and, and God had no alternative but to just clear the field so that even Messiah could come. Otherwise, yeah. there wouldn't have been a pure bloodline. There wouldn't have been anything. And so so here we are at Sodom and Gomorrah 2.0. 2.0, yeah. Um, and so I just I get, I get so grieved f- for the people that have are enduring this that have lost their their little babies in this. It just oh, and I'm I'm sure we don't know Half but just it. a tiny portion of the details of it. We'd probably all just fall over if we if we knew it all. And how many how many people have been threatened? How many people have been 
blackmailed on something like this. Um, it's it's like they do every time, you know. And and the big problem is, is there's been no justice. There's been no justice. <laughs> Look at how much is there's going to be though. I really I keep up the hope that God is going to bring justice. And the only way he's going to do that, though, guys, is to judge the evil. And for him to judge the evil, it means that everything's going to rock and roll. That's that's why people need to be, you know, if any extra money you have, you need to be setting back food. Um, you need to be preparing in in every way that you can. You know, if you're, a, I'm not so worried about the, the center of the country, although we made preparations and everything, but I'm I'm concerned about the coasts. Because if they're, if, they're the most liberal, and that's that's what happened in the Old Testament, when when the nation, you know, when God's people would would stray far from Him, He'd let a foreign pagan come in and and put them in bondage. And the truth is, is everybody's in bondage right now. They just don't know it. Every American is in bondage. They just don't know it. And that's why we have to fight the Babylonian system that's here, um, and we fight it through spiritual warfare. Oh, absolutely. And it, there, there's, there's so much that the church needs to know, and we're going to be getting into here in a little bit about, about spiritual warfare. But, you know, Mary, one of the things I have discovered is, and I, I wrote about this in my second book, that the Word of God is the most interactive. I mean, when, when in the book of Hebrews it says it's living, it's powerful, quicker than any two-edged sword, the mindset that we go to the Word, the questions that we have when we go to the Word, the word can begin speaking to us out of those when you realize that the gospels was set in spiritual warfare. Mm-hmm. When when Jesus was born, Herod tried to kill him, so he had they had to escape to Egypt. As as soon as John the Baptist pointed him out and said, "Behold, the Lamb of God," I mean, it was on. Yeah, it was. And so immediately we we think, well, they did the the warfare was just when. When he was tempted, you know, in the desert for 40 days. But no, no, no. Oh, it was on. <laughs> it, it was on from that moment all the way to the resurrection, and then he had, then he had completely won. But th- that's why uh, when, when you begin reading it, you see how Jesus conducted himself in spiritual warfare. The very first salvo that he did is he sent out 70 disciples. 70, not, not 60, not 50, not 40, not 12, 70. Why 70? Because at the Tower of Babel, when, when man rebelled against God, the Bible says, and, and uh, it, 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 there was, this is one of the few places in, in, the, in the Word in Deuteronomy where there is a controversy of the translation. Uh, it, it'll, it says that God divided the nations according to the sons of Israel. Uh, we now find from the Dead Sea Scrolls that this actually matches things that we see in the Septuagint stuff. It was according to the B'nai Elohim, the sons of God. And it lists 70 nations. So the the nations were divided into 70. And this, this was Jesus salvo into the kingdom of darkness saying, I'm getting all the Gentile nations back. I'm getting all mm. the nations back. Which we see the climax of this in the book of Revelation where it says, now the nations have become yeah. the nations of our God and of his Christ. So Jesus... All of it was spiritual warfare. But unless we read the Gospels with that mindset of this is how Jesus conducted himself with spiritual warfare, we miss so much. And, yeah, and that's I, true. I th- it's, it's the same thing with the book of Psalms. The Psalms, the Psalms are filled with precatory prayers of, 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 of seeking the face of God, not only for vengeance, but for, for justice and all these different things. They're all there. It was the spiritual warfare manual, manual of the early church. And we need to wake up to spiritual warfare. The spiritual warfare is all throughout the Word of God, and there's such powerful instruction there. Oh, there uh, is. And, you know, when I think back on when God gave me that breakthrough moment in January of 94, and then he gave me a, a gracious space of about eight months to learn the Word, because when the battle started, like when, when everything came back and I had to fight my way out, the way I fought my way out was quoting the word. He taught me my authority in Luke ten nineteen. He taught me binding and loosening in Matthew sixteen nineteen. He'd uh, taken me back to in the Psalms, you know the 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 prayers against the wicked and and things like that. And that that is the crux of spiritual warfare. Oh yes, is it's you quote the word. That's how you know that the word is true. It is living because there is an immediate action 
against the the kingdom of darkness, and man, do they hate it. (laughs) They hate it when you quote the word. They are defenseless against it. You declare what Jesus did when he went to the cross and rose from the dead. You start declaring he gave us his authority. I don't have to put up with you anymore. I don't have to put up with generational spirits. I don't have to put up with anything. You are defeated. Now you have to go in Jesus' name. And that's the way he taught me how how to to, uh, fight. When, when the spoken word, when you speak the word, according to the book of, of uh, Ephesians, is the sword of the Spirit, mm-hmm. okay? And so we have our sword fight in the temptation of Jesus in the wilderness. You know, the devil may have showed up and brought a switchblade, and Jesus pulled out a sword. And he spoke the word, and each time it, brought, right. it, brought, it brought the enemy to his knees. That's and right. and the, what's interesting is after after that 40 days, Mary, you know, we, they had angels come minister to Jesus, but it said, and the devil left him for a season or mm-hmm. whatever. Don't you know he crawled out of that place? He crawled out of that place licking his wounds. There's something that happens that, that I, I think that we're just now beginning to realize the power of it. When you believe in your heart the word and you have hidden the word in your heart and you speak it forth in belief and authority, it, it it's like an atomic weapon. It, it mm-hmm. absolutely decimates the enemy. Right. And and so it's it's not and we're we're too busy trying to quote the promises, trying to encourage ourselves instead of meeting because every promise of God there's God says if you do this I'll do this. So if if we're doing that the rest of it's automatic. We can stand in faith. I have done what God has said. Therefore now I can speak. Mm-hmm into this situation. That's that, it. That's why in, in first John it says that if we if we sin not and and we're doing what the word tells us to do, we're keeping his commandments, that we can pray in confidence. Because you, you know you can you can lie to the friends around you. You can't lie to your own spirit. And what I what I have seen is people that have a whole bunch of sin going on in their life, they will try to raise up an authority and their own spirit will shut it down saying you got sin in your life. You can't yeah, do this. That's true. And so it, it ends up being empty words that fall to the ground. Or someone that is deceived, and they yeah. try it, and then they get their lunch eat. You get there like you know, it, it's yeah. really hard to understand this stuff, and I, I've got firsthand knowledge and a witness of it. In the town I was raised, I have absolutely no doubt at this point that there was an experiment done of mind control there. Yeah. Absolutely no doubt. I saw it in the sky. I saw the flashing lights. I saw the reaction of the people when it happened. I saw... Well, you know, we, we would see certain during times that the entire town would switch. That that right. that is that is, and that's that's why I couldn't even see it. I would switch with them. Yeah, I think that's why you were the oddball out there. That's why, like, I'd have people say to me, like, like they'd say, "Well, Mary's husband's just he's not one of us," and I thought they were at the time. I thought they were talking about, "Well, he's a city guy. We're country folk," but no, he, they were talking about he. You weren't switching, and uh, there's no telling what demonic control in my life was putting you to sleep that because that can happen but you weren't switching with the rest of us and i would i would understand anybody that lived in that town saying there's nothing here that's what i thought all those years i thought what a dumpy little town nothing going on boring but but what nobody knew is that it it was controlled and i believe like the woman that crawled in my in the van the witch that crawled in the van after me and all the people that I saw ended up working with her. I think there were the people like me that were mind control victims. There were other people that weren't mind control victims, but they were being controlled. They were and, and the occult people that were, yeah. were there were monitoring it, yeah. making sure everybody stayed in line. Uh, I had a, a friend that um, told me that one day the woman that crawled in, in the van with me and the kids that she walked up to her and, and uh said, how are you doing? And she had thought she was talking about her kids. Um, and she said, not behaving. And she said, that's what I'd like to hear. And she thought she was talking about her. And so so they were there to monitor and make mm-hmm. sure nobody got out of line. That's why they were so desperate that she crawled in my van. She had to show herself. <laughs> you know, they don't they don't do that. She had to show herself crawling in that van. They were so desperate to stop whatever the prayers were doing that, that they showed themselves. Uh, and so 
and and we saw what the prayers were doing. Everything was was going crazy. The well, drug traffic, yeah. the human trafficking. You know, I wasn't able to put it together at once, but I sat back and I thought, okay, this happened and this happened. I know that person's trafficking drugs always has been in the town, and I was just able to put it all together. And I thought, oh my word. Well, back then too, we had this spill your guts anointing that would come on us, and we would have people come to share stuff. You almost had to comb your hair down. Yeah. And people sometimes that didn't even know each other were confirming what other ones had said. It was just it was so bizarre guys but praise god for this that he let us see it because we would have not had a clue how to pray i wouldn't have known how to get healed i wouldn't have have had a clue about any of it because it was all so hidden and and what we can all rejoice in at this particular time is god is revealing everything now we haven't seen justice yet even though many people have seen hunter biden's laptop and what was on it they they've got his own book saying that he was hooked on cocaine. is it cocaine or heroin one of those big drugs and and he and they have where he filled out and got a firearm which was illegal because you he lied he lied and had to say that to get that that he wasn't on drugs so they've got all this stuff so in my in my view this is why i have great hope whether our legal system does something about this or not I'm telling you, Almighty God's getting ready to do something. And and the main reason is what they've done to the children. Absolutely. You just don't mess with God's babies. No. And it may take a while to get here, but I am telling you, God is going to deal with this. I think that the greater the corruption, and right now the corruption is great. It has permeated every aspect of our society. Okay. The greater the corruption, the greater cry is required of the remnant to bring justice. Because everything in the system will fight to either cover up or to, uh, or to try to divert that judgment. Mm-hmm. You know, it's like with, with, you know, with Cain, he had judgment from God. Okay, you're going to be a wanderer. You're going to be a vagabond. The ground's no longer going to yield to you, all these different things. You know what happens? He goes and starts a city so that those that weren't cursed can take care of him while he simply facilitated the city. He was the first politician and first city builder. They, they try things, and I, I think that the level of things that's going to have to uproot this is going to be massive. That's why uh, the remnant, we, we need to be seeking God so that we're prepared, spirit, soul, and body. Uh, the, you know, the book of Hebrews, it says there's a day coming that even the heavens themselves are going to be shaken. And the writer of Hebrews says, now listen, all this is going to happen. It's, it's, been, it's been promised of God that it's going to happen. See to it that you're part of a kingdom that cannot be shaken. And I think that's exactly what God is stressing among the remnant right now is press into the kingdom. Learn your authority in the kingdom. Learn how to move in spiritual things in the kingdom because it's going to be key in the days ahead. Right. It is. Um, our friend Gordy sent me a, an email talking about a day of repentance, uh, prayer and fasting that Steve Quayle has, has called. And I, I think any time we can all come together and pray and fast yes. that it's powerful. And this is going to be uh, starting at midnight, May 31st, and all day June 1st for 24 hours. And so I think that we um, we all should be praying, Which asking God to forgive the sins um, of our nation, yeah. and that every plan and scheme of the enemy would be thwarted. Because they have, you know, there are whistleblowers that know exactly what's on the books, what they have planned to do. We can see that they're trying to destroy the nation, that they're trying to cut off the food supply, that they're trying to p- shut everybody down. You know, monkey monkeypox is now the next thing they, that they'll try to, to use. So it's not it's not a, a, a secret anymore what they're planning for the people that understand what's going on. But, but think how many millions of us there are that do know, that, that do know pray. exactly what's going on. So let's, let's join in together. And let's let's fast and pray because what what uh, Mike God and I got this week were different things, but they flow perfectly together. Because what God was telling me was to um, pray and tap into the anointing that is is with the Pentecost celebration, and that's the evening of June fourth to June fifth. It's early this year. Yeah, you know, I had to to look up and see. And during that time, there is an anointing for shackles to fall off. Yes. There is an anointing for people to get free during that, that season. And so we want to pray about that. And, uh, and I wanted to read from Psalm 2 um, 
Verse 1 says, Why did the heathen rage and the people imagine a vain thing? The kings of the earth set themselves, and the rulers take counsel together against the Lord and against his anointed, saying, Let us break uh, their bands asunder and cast away their cords from us. And so, you know, the, the kingdom of darkness has worked overtime to shackle everybody. Mm-hmm. And this is a, a season that we can tap into an anointing from heaven because God flows with his seasons. He flows with his feasts. And so I wanted to read it, too, from Acts sixteen twenty six through 33. And this was when uh, Paul was in, uh, and Silas were in prison. It says, And suddenly there was a great earthquake, so that the foundations of the prison were shaken. And immediately all the doors were opened, and everyone's bands were loosed. And the keeper of the prison, awaking out of his sleep and seeing the prison doors open, he drew out his sword and would have killed himself, supposing that the prisoners had been fled, which he would have been killed anyway, probably, if if they'd all escaped. But Paul cried with a loud voice, saying, Do thyself no harm, for we are all here. Now, let's stop right there for a second. (laughs) How many people, if they got shackles fell off and were freed from a prison, wouldn't just take up running? But they were so in tune with what God wanted And they said, then he called for a light and sprang in and came trembling and fell down before Paul and Silas and brought them out and said, sirs, what must I do to be saved? See, they were, they were after a soul. They didn't just run out of there. They were saying, okay, if we stay here, follow what the Lord is telling us to do. There's going to be a soul saved. And they said, believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved in thy house. And they spake unto him the word of the Lord and to all that were in his house. And he took them the same hour of the night and washed their stripes. That was a major thing. Yeah. The guard that was standing over him washed their stripes, was washing their wounds that he may have been the one that made <laughs> and was baptized, he and all his, straightway. That's, a, that's a powerful thing because in, in the Roman culture, if those prisoners would have had, had escaped, he would have been killed. He would have been killed. Yeah. And so look at that. Look at, look at the power that's available um when those shackles fall off yeah that i mean that was that was miracle working power things that we don't see so much this day the power of god flowing in miraculous ways and then there was a soul saved and see that's what god's getting ready to do he's getting <laughs> ready to have the shackles fall off he is going to raise up his remnant his army for the last days and there's going to be one soul saved after another oh absolutely that's what's going to happen and so <clears throat> what What I was sensing from the Lord is, man, there is getting ready to be some shackles fall off of people. And and then, though, to be able to go forward, that's when the spiritual warfare has to be done. That's not that's not when you just sit and 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 say, Oh yeah, I'm free and now I'm just gonna go on. No, you gotta hit it with everything you got right then because the enemy is gonna fight you with everything he's got. You if you if you get saved, you've got to do the generational uh, curse breaking you've got to do breaking off of soul ties because those are the avenues that the enemy's going to come in and just let you have it he's got a legal right to it's not been covered by the blood those those spirits are just hanging around you even if you're you're saved they're gonna they they still have a legal right if the curses are not broken yeah, they do now everybody says well jesus broke the curses he made the way for every curse to be broken but he you paid got the apply. price but you have to apply it you have to take authority, and you have to say, you are not affecting me or my family anymore. Your time's up. It's broken. The blood of Jesus is against you. And that's, that's the key. When the shackles fall off, that's when you got to fight. Oh, absolutely. And that's what Mike is going to talk about. He's going to talk about an aspect of uh, the Lord's Prayer and spiritual yeah, God, warfare. God's been talking to me about you know, the spiritual warfare and rechanging or changing how that we view the Word of God as it being the manual in spiritual warfare. Now, in Matthew, you know, he's teaching. He said, listen, don't be like the hypocrites, and this is how they pray. Don't be like these guys. This is how they pray. Uh, and, but in some, of the, in the, some of the other Gospels, it's his disciples come to him and say, listen, we see how the Pharisees pray. Ain't nothing happening, okay? Nothing's happening. But we see that when you pray, stuff happens. When you speak, stuff happens. And so... The Pharisees have been teaching us how to pray forever, and nothing's happening. We want you to teach us how to pray. 
And when you look at the Lord's Prayer, it is an outline of things that you should include in your prayer. It's not something that you just simply uh, go by rhetoric and just pray through. Because part of it adjusts the paradigm. Remember, Jesus, now, in, prior to this in Matthew, he's saying, don't pray like the hypocrites who love. They're, they're just doing it so that people can see them. He also dealt, there's one about the, uh, about the, 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 the Pharisee and, and the sinner praying. And one says, Lord, I just thank you that I'm not like this bad guy over here. And the other guy says, Lord, have, have mercy on me. And a sinner said, which one's justified? Okay. So Jesus said, listen, you, you've got to square away your attitude. Because I've seen some people that get into spiritual warfare really get kind of haughty and stuff. And so Jesus nips this in the bud. He says, here's how you begin your spiritual warfare prayer. Our Father which art in heaven, hallowed be your name. In other words, it's about you, not about me. Every time a soul is saved, it's about you. Every time a body is healed, it's about you. Every time a demon is cast out, it's about you. Every yeah. time that you change the political scene, it's about you. It's about bringing you glory, Lord. I don't care if anybody even knows my name. I want them to hallow your name, the name of God. And I think that's part of the problem that we're having right now in the body is that where it's, it's almost like, you know, I, I've, I've got to make a splash. I've got to make this. I've got to make that so that I can build my, so I can build my ministry. It's the apostles had it right in, in the first, in the first book, uh, chapter of Acts, where it says, we have a portion of his ministry. Lord, our goal is that everybody hallows your name. Everybody reverences the name of God. So what, whatever you're going to do in my life, it's got to point back to you. Mm, that's right. It's got to point back to you. And so the, my first prayer is I'm, 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 I'm correcting myself. I'm checking my attitudes. It's you that has to be hallowed. It's your name that has to be reverenced. So that self cannot get in the way because self, our, our carnal nature, is the enemy of spiritual warfare. It will get you into trouble. Mm -hmm. It will get you off. And just because you can, you know, Jesus, I mean, he even, he even corrects part of this. He said, listen, there's going to be those of us, there's going to be those in the last days when I stand to judge and say, Lord, Lord, have we not healed in your name, cast out demons in your name, all these different things. And he's going to say, I never knew you. You, you, you weren't about me. You weren't about my kingdom. You were about your own things. Get away from me, you workers of iniquity, you workers of lawlessness. It, it, it's time for the body. All of us have to have this, this check in our spirit that it's all about him. Mm -hmm. If Mary and I for years have, have loved to quote the, the, uh, John the Baptist, for him to increase, I must decrease. And... Guys, the, just to be honest, the greatest sermons that I have ever preached is when Mike Lake got out of the way and just let Jesus preach the room. The greatest things that we have ever done so far in ministry is when Mary and I have gotten out of the way. We've just been obedient yeah, to God. That's true. And, and, and everything that we have done, the books or whatever, all of that is because he did it through us. And that, that has to be the heart of the remnant. It's about him. It's about bringing Jesus glory. It's, it's about pointing souls to him. Even the, the, Jesus said, even the Holy Spirit will not speak of himself. He's only going to speak of me. Because it's all pointing back to Jesus. The noble aspect of God, almighty God come in the flesh. It's all about making his name revered in the earth again. Mm -hmm. And so when we... Well, I'm going to share this too. Remember when Paul and Silas, they, they were out and they, they healed somebody and everybody kind of clamored to them and they said, well, it's, it's not by us guys. It, it was nothing in us. It, it, there's, there's nothing inherent in us. It was by the name of Jesus. That's got to be our attitude. I, I think that when we can return back to that paradigm, I think that's what's going to cause the power of God to move. Mm -hmm. It's being narcissistic, being, being this, this carnal that has taken hold of the body is what is restraining and, and cutting off the power of God from flowing because God's power will not flow through selfishness. It will not flow through carnality. 
And thinking that it's got to be done in a church house. Yeah. So I think what's getting ready to happen is such a powerful flow. Middle of Walmart, middle of. Yeah, just, just so, you know, it's going to be like when um, they walked in their shadow, healed people. It's, it didn't have anything to do with them. It had to do with the, the power of God around them. And when that power is manifests, then everything in the kingdom will start flowing. Healings deliverance, you know, miracles. And that's that's where I think God's getting ready to take us. You know, there's got to there's be training. There's got to be training in the Word or you get in trouble. You have to know the Word. You have to know what you can do and what, what it's not wise to do. You have to have uh, knowledge of, of anything that's in your life, and you get that covered. You get in that process of, of sanctification. But it's I think it's going to be just out on the street. You know, I was listening to a young couple the other day that had were involved with those, um, you know, out in California where they were having uh, revival on the beaches. And they said they were getting so many people saved, and they would contact the bigger churches and say, can we bring them there? And they'd say, well, that's that's not what they're into. And I thought, if you're not into taking in <laughs> newly saved people and training them, what are you doing? Yeah. What? <laughs> the, 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 the Great Commission is divided into two parts. Lead them to Jesus, then train them up. Lead them to yeah. Jesus, then train them up. And 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 yeah. what we've mentored a couple of generations into is, is something. It's something crazy. I mean, it's just crazy. It, it, it's frightening me. I, I saw a, a thing in the, in the Christian Post that just little over half, just of evangelical pastors, just little over half, have a biblical worldview. So I don't even know if that's the correct answer on that one. I, I mean, they, they take polls and things, but I am telling you, yeah. Mike, the majority of what's called the body of Christ is in such trouble. Laodicea. We're, we're, we're the Laodicean church. Oh. We think we're rich and we see, but we're wretched, naked, naked blind, yeah. and poor. I, I'm telling you. And, and so a lot of, of what God's got to do during this time and and I and I'm sure he's going to do it through shaking because if you think everything's fine and there's nothing wrong and everything's just flowing wonderful, he's got to shake you. He's, he'll have to shake you out of your comfort zone. Absolutely. And and you know I don't think anybody's going to have to go through the kind of shaking we did, but I mean he's going to shake everything so that we can get back to what he wants. Yeah, there's an old Steve Cam song, "Shake Me to Wake Me." And well, that's what the, he's going to have to do. And, and the Apostle Paul said, hey, it's high time that you wake up out of slumber. That's why I know it's not going to be smooth sailing. No. And I, I always knew that. I knew when God said he was going to take the nation back. And I saw, I saw the ultimate judgment. And then I, he started showing me what to pray, to repent for sins and things like that, because to it mitigate can it. mitigate it. Yes. It can take it back. There won't be so many people destroyed. There's... Because I'm, I'm telling you, what, what this nation deserves for how we've turned our back on God and the atrocities that, is we, we deserve destruction. And so we cry out to God for mercy and say, Father, for, for your people that love you, for the souls that are yet to be saved, we ask for your mercy yeah. and, and shake us to that place where we can flow with you again. I think one of the things that has, you know, we, we have so many of the remnant that are awake. The rest of the church is clueless, and 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 I've actually seen where they're mocking part parts of the body are mocking the remnant. Yeah, they are. And I'm thinking, God, I know you're going to have to shake, but what what I what I'm seeing is for those that are awake, that God is going to make like a Goshen for them. He's 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 going to have his hand on them, with one hand as he's shaking. The snot out of the other ones, mm-hmm. you know, because it's like, God, how bad is it going to have to get before they wake up out of their slumber? I mean, they're in a coma. Yeah, it is. It's and that, that's one. Of, that's one of the things that has really, really concerned me. And well, and I don't, I mean, the, it, I don't want to go through this stuff. I don't, you know, nobody would want to go through what I've seen is going to happen. But, but I know that we're going to have some things happen. So, so it's crazy not to prepare. I, the other thing that worries me is I think so many people have been taught we're getting out of here before anything bad happens. And so they're, they're not going to prepare. They're not going to even look at things. Guys, that historically has not worked well. I mean, it, it's not going to be long before everybody says, okay, we're supposed to be out of here. Look what just happened. Yeah. 
And so, so I would rather be in a, a position where I've been looking at it all these years like we have, prepare what God tells you to prepare, and then just prepare for such an outpouring of the power of God that we're ready to flow with it. Yeah. And, you know, a, a friend of mine years ago, I mean, he, he had a built a nice home. He had a secret room, and it was full of food and full of Bibles and everything. And he said, he said, I'm, he said, I'm still undecided if it's pre-trib, mid-trib, post-trib. He said, he said, but if, let's say, he said, if it is pre-trib, I don't need all this stuff here. He said, there's going to be people that do, and, and the Holy Spirit can lead them to this house so they can get it. There, there has to be, we, we have to understand that things may get rough, what, no matter where your eschatology is. I know historically, like in China, when the communists took over, all the, none of the pre-tribbers survived because they said, God's not going to let it get this bad. We're going to get out of here. All those that believed that they were going to go through the tribulation, they ran to the mountains is the reason that, that Christianity even survived in China. With, but Laodicea tends to put you to sleep. It does. It, because, because, you know, we, guys, the poorest of us, and I, I mean, and I know, you know, I, I, was, I was raised poor, but the, the, everything is relative. I mean, there, there are some poor people that are, that are just really, really poor in America, and, and they, they come in, in every color, okay? It's, it's not just, you know, it's not just black folks or white folks. It's, it's the poor, it can be universal, and I mean really poor, but yet the poorest of us in America are rich compared to other people in other nations. And, and that's just the, the sad state of things. And I think the elite have a lot to do with that about control. But all of us need to be awake. We, we need to be awake, and we cannot trust in money. Uh, money and affluence can mimic spirituality, but it, 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 mm-hmm. that's not it. It's... Silver and gold have I none, but in the name of Jesus, rise up and walk. That's when you know you got some cash from heaven. That's when you when you have when you have the the influence that you need to have. Yeah, that's right. Well, there there's some reason that the elite are so worried about the United States. I mean, it, obviously, it's been a powerful nation and things like that, and they want to take it down. But there's something here that they're worried about, and it's got to do with the remnant. Yep. It's got to do with, with if God can get 100 praying people together, they can change the world. It's got to do with that. They're worried about it, and they're worried about their plans. And so— They're sure not worried about Washington because they control it. Well, and, they, and they, they've been building everything they needed to take down the United States all these years. It's so cursed through Freemasonry. It's so cursed through the debauchery that happens. It's so cursed by what they've done to push God out. So, so it looks like easy fodder. But I'm going to tell you something. You get a hundred of us together. Yeah. You get a thousand. You get a million praying Christians that know their authority, that have worked to get the sin out of their life, and you watch what those praying Christians can do. Yeah. We can turn this around and where these people that are so evil aren't in power anymore. You know, what I what I think is they don't so fear America because— the United States of America, they control. What they don't control are the remnant. Mm-hmm. And the very next statement in this prayer, your kingdom come. We don't understand the power of those words. That is a faith declaration. Yeah, it is. And uh-huh. it's equivalent, you know, in, 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 the, in the first Transformers movie where those, you know, the guys are in the desert and they're fighting and and they're fighting these transformers that they they don't know what to do with and everything and you have this huge military airship that has like 60 caliber saber rounds that 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 are on fire when they when they fire it's like a this huge cannon kind of thing it's probably bigger much bigger than a than a 60 caliber 50 caliber what does the guy say when he sees it coming he says bring the rain that's today a Pentecost. Well, that's it. And let me tell you that what happened with Paul and Silas when the great earthquake came and the foundations were shaken, the doors were opened, the shackles fell off, what happened was the kingdom showed up. Yes, exactly. That's why, guys, we, we look at this as, oh, your kingdom come. No, when the kingdom comes, when mm. the kingdom mm-hmm. comes, 
hearts change. Sinners begin crying out because yeah. of their sin, That's because right. it's manifest. Every evil is manifest. Every evil work has been manifest so that they have a chance to repent. That blinded eyes begin to open, deaf ears both spiritually and physically begin to hear again. That's it. That the lame begin to walk, that demons begin to cry out and they're cast out, that the, that people begin to get healed, that the dead raise again. Mm-hmm both metaphorically because a lot of the church is dead. But you know what I found out about dead wood? A single match can set that bad boy ablaze. It's it's time for the fire fire of God to fall. Fire of Almighty God. And, you know, there were people praying. The whole time they were in, in, in prison there, you had God's people praying. So, you know, as we, as we fast and pray this, this next day, as we fast and pray together, what, what do you bet that the kingdom's going to show up? (laughs) Yes. We need the kingdom. We need shackles to fall off of people. We need these people that are so blinded to just, you know, it's, there have been people saying that they, they've been given dreams about uh, some of the Supreme Court uh, justices are going to get saved. See, that's what I've been waiting on. I've been waiting for earth-shaking changes. And, and you know, if you ever sit and talk to a liberal, you'll sit there and there's no arguing with them because they'll just come back with the same thing, no matter how logically you come against it. They'll come back with the same thing. I can't wait till they start this rhetoric. Something happens so powerfully that they're just, they can't even speak it anymore. They're just dumbfounded and sitting going, what in the world just happened? And then I'm, you can say, the kingdom showed up. <laughs> I'm starting, I'm, I'm believing God that they begin dream, having dreams about the reality of hell mm-hmm. and that that's where they're headed. That's right. And they wake up every morning in cold sweats yeah. thinking, I need to find somebody that really knows Jesus. That's right. That's right. The, this is, this is going to be a, a time of snatching people. Yeah, snatching them the out of the fires of hell. Yeah, because that's exactly where they're headed. And pulling them into the fire of God, which is that's a it. fire that sets you free. That's it. And I'm telling you, when somebody so bound gets set free, they're a firebrand. That's right, and uh, you know that's uh, the the uh, the one thesis that I just finished grading. Whether she was talking about just how dedicated those people were back in the sixties, they pulled them out of the the sexual revolution and the drug revolution and all this stuff. The Jesus people, a lot of just, addictions, a <laughs> lot of addictions, and just how grateful and how dedicated they were to the things of the kingdom of God. And we're we're I'm, we're going to see that again. That one of the things I have been praying now for over a decade because I saw it back in the '60s. The devil pushed them so far from God, he threw them right into God. Yeah, and I, I'm believing that's happening today. I believe it. I believe and guys, it, guys. It's it's Lord, your kingdom come. That's it. And keep praying that your king. It's it's all about the kingdom. When the God's kingdom comes, you ever. Well, Jesus said, "Listen, when you go and you heal the sick and you." And and you cast out demons. You say, "Listen, the the kingdom of God has come near you." It's just this was just a drive by of the kingdom. You want to come on in. That's the message of the church. That's it. And then he goes on to say, "Listen, your will be done." Now, how do I want your will to be done? I want you to have it done in earth first, in me, in this earthen right. vessel, in this in this old earthen pot, just like it's done in heaven. How many know that there's there's absolutely no resistance to God's will in heaven? Absolutely nothing. He wills it. It's done. That's the way we pray that we live. God, you will it. I do it. That's it. Your kingdom's there. It's done. That is the core of spiritual warfare. Oh, that's too simplistic. Well, actually, it's it's, it's kind of complicated because you got to get you out of the way to get the kingdom there. That was a lot of me to get out of the way, and I'm still working on it. <laughs> He's still working on me. Well, the first thing I thought of when I heard about these little babies that got killed is I get I get so angry over that, and I, I have to watch it. I'll get in the flesh um, because that's that's what I was would vacillate between because I knew little kids were getting hurt back in that town where I came from, and I, I'd have to pull myself back out of the flesh because if you stay in the flesh, you'll make the wrong move, and and that's what we've got to do now, and then we'll – if we can keep ourselves out of the flesh and the kingdom's here and there's miracles, then we'll do what Paul and Silas did. They're not going to head for the hills and run, yeah. hey, yay, we're free. They stayed there so that guy could get saved. Him and his whole household. Yeah. I tell you what, that's, that's because why, why did they do that? The Spirit of God told them. That's they, right. That's they had right. the Spirit of God within. That's it. Now, 
I mean, we know that there's that everybody's dealing with shortages and stuff, but I want you to look at the, the progression of this prayer, okay? You be hallowed. It's all about you. It is. Okay. Bring your kingdom. Bring me in line with the kingdom. I want to do your will. After those things are set into motion, those things, Jesus said, give us this day our daily bread. Okay, what, is, what does that mean? When all this other is set in motion, this part's simple. Mm-hmm. Okay. Jesus, he provides. <laughs> Jesus never had a need in his entire ministry that God did not meet. Even when he had to pay taxes, he sent his disciples fishing. Yep. You're going to pull out a fish, there's going to be a gold coin in that, and it's going to take care of my taxes and your taxes, and we're all going to be okay. Why, why, why can you do that? Because you have set everything else in order. But what we want to do is we want to take, give us this daily bread, and we put it, we put it at the very top. Yeah, yeah, we got to have our needs met. <laughs> we we, we got to have lots of food. <laughs> we, we, we want our needs met more than we want your name to be hallowed. Uh-oh. You see the, the, the problem? When these things are set into place, that when you're doing spiritual warfare right and you're seeking first the kingdom of God, then all these things will be added unto you. You're setting things in proper, right. you're, you're setting things in a place where God can. That's it. And that's why when you, when you want to hear from God, you do the uh, pattern of the tabernacle. You come into uh, his presence with thanksgiving, into his courts with praise, into the holy of holies with worship. That's the way that you proceed. And then, yeah. Then you get into his and presence, to get, and, and to you get hear. a lot of church to, to understand that. That's, you know, we we you know I, I started out Baptist. You know, you just you just sing from the hymns, you know, or whatever. And then I I got spirit filled, and I began to find out that there's praise, mm-hmm. and that there's worship, and how many saints don't understand the dynamic of praise and worship, that it 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 sets the tone. For your, for your, you know, sometimes when I have trouble praying, you know, it's just, you just, there's just like, there's just something. I know there's been some times even with walking over there and uh, I try to have my prayer time. And it's this, it's just like, it's just not getting off the ground. I put on some praise mm-hmm. and I start praising because it brings me into yeah, his that's, presence. That's that right. You, you don't come before the Lord empty handed. You don't come with, give me, give me, give me. You come with praise, and then, yeah. it, then it goes into worship. And once you get done with the worship and then you set things in order, then what I have found is the Father says, what do you need? Yep, that's that's the pattern. And, and that's uh, what we've got to do at the conferences. Yes. We've got to start out with we Thanksgiving. We need praisers. We've got to have praisers. We've got to have worshipers. Yes. And then the power of God will show up. Because that, that's what brings the power, and it's yeah. also what prepares. You know, I, I've been in, in services where... The praise and worship wasn't there, and boy, trying to bring a word was hard. Mm-hmm. It is. And I have been in services where the people were hungry. There was praise and worship there, and it was literally like it, they were pulling it out of me. Mm-hmm. It's a, All of a sudden, I started making connections I had never made before because the spirit of revelation is there, and the right. Holy Spirit's moving, and you're starting. And it, it, it's, it's, a, it's a powerful thing. And so when we, we put it there, then we can this week, we can get confidence, okay, Praise and worship. You're, it's all about you. It's not about me. It's about you. Bring your kingdom. Mm-hmm. Let your will be done. Now I can stand in confidence saying, you're going to meet my daily bread. You're going to meet my daily That's needs. Right. You're going to give me today what I need. And then what does he do next? He says, okay, forgive me. I, I want to make sure I have a clear slate with you. And since I have been forgiven, I release everybody of anything they have ever done to me. And Holy Spirit, show me. If there's something that I'm holding back on that maybe I don't even remember, there's some resentment or whatever, show it to me so that I can let them go, so that I can forgive them. Because let me tell you something, the acid does more damage to the container than that which it's poured upon. And the whole time is sitting there eating you, keeping you in bondage. And the devil is saying, listen, I have a right to do this because you're not forgiving. You're not forgiving. And, and Jesus even said, listen, you know, if you refuse to forgive, you open up the door to the tormentors to come and torment you. Let it go. Because that's what the kingdom does. The kingdom brings forgiveness. 
the kingdom brings healing and restoration. Now, with that being said, I can say this. You can forgive them. You can let it go, okay? But that doesn't mean you have to be their best buddy because they cannot restore a relationship until they come and say, I was wrong, and please forgive me. It doesn't restore a relationship. It just you releases them. Now they're in the hands of God for God to deal with. That's right. Because vengeance is mine, saith the Lord. Okay, that's it's okay now, God. I am releasing them. I forgive them now. You're they're you're, they're your problem. I'm praying for them to get right with you. I'm praying for their salvation or whatever. And there's sometimes you you have to release them and not even have connection to them anymore. And that that could go with parents. You know, it says we're supposed to take care of our parents, but but there are parents that so wound their children. And, and won't stop wounding them. Yeah. Just keep on to where God may tell you, separate. Yeah. Get get away so I can heal you and I can use you. The way that they're conducting themselves, you can't have fellowship. Mm-hmm. You it doesn't mean you fellowship. stop praying for them, but, but you, you take yourself out of that. If it just is apparent that they're not going to stop hurting you, and sometimes that's physical hurt, Yeah. then God will get you to a safe yeah. place. Now, in the next line, there's there's actually... Uh, this is a place where there's an interpolation in the Word of God. And interpolation means that there's variance, and sometimes it can be uh, editors with scribes' notes that they had actually added in, or, or variance in the text. It should not be. It should not read, "Lead us not into temptation." It should read, "Do not allow us to be led into temptation." Mm-hmm. Govern me. Let the peace of God be my my umpire. Govern me so that I don't. So that the devil can't get one up on me. To yeah, lead me into that's temptation. That's exactly right. And I think a lot of people take that the wrong way. Because God will not no, lead you into temptation. The no. Bible is very, he, if he tempts any man, he tempts him with good. Okay, it's taste and see that the Lord yeah. is good. God tempts no man. Lord, let me be so led by the Holy Spirit that the enemy can't be sneak, sneak in here and lead me in temptation. But always deliver me from that evil. Yes. Always deliver me, Father. Help me to step over the landmines. Help me to step over the uh, the snare of the enemy. Let him fall into his own snares. Mm-hmm. But guide my steps. And then you know what? It ends up with praise. Okay, now all this is done. I'm seeing the kingdom come. I'm seeing all these things happen. It's going back almost to the first line. Yours is the kingdom. Mm-hmm. Not Mike Lake, not Mary Lake, not any other minister. It's not our kingdom, it's your kingdom. That's it. But, but oh, Lord, all to, all to be the glory. Oh, it's your kingdom that you be honored. It says, for yours is the kingdom and the power and the glory. You know, when God does something wonderful, you got to give out a shout of praise. Mm-hmm. It'll flow out of you. <laughs> I heard Bob Mumford years ago teach one of the, I think one of the most profound messages I ever heard. It was it was how to handle the glory of God, and he says sometimes we get this false humility that when someone is you know comes up to you and says you know what you did to so minister to me or I thank you that you prayed for me and and God healed me and stuff and said we we can move in false humility and almost shut down their praise, and he says we need to rejoice with them. Yeah, and just God. point to Jesus. And then he says, when you go back into your personal prayer life, you raise up your hands and say, Daddy, look what you did. Yeah, that's it. Thank you. That had, you know, I, I had, uh, I can't remember if it was on our podcast or one show when I, I said, you know, when people ask, you know, what Bible character do you consider yourself? I a lot of times identify with Balaam's donkeys or Peter. You know, Peter had hook, mouth and you know, foot disease. He always stuck his feet in his mouth. I do that a lot. And to know that I said something or did something that really ministered to somebody, all the glory's got to go to him. Well, that's it, because, I mean, that, that's the only way this could get done. Because you, 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 Mary knows me more better than anybody else that if there's a way of saying the right thing the wrong way and really putting your foot in your mouth, I really am gifted in that area. I mean, it's like I, ought to have a, 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 I should have an award just in that area. And when God uses me, I know there's a difference between when Mike Lake is doing things and when God is doing things. There's a clarity that comes. And with that, I, I, I've, I've got to give him all the glory. It, it, it's him that does it. And it's humbling. It's humbling. It is humbling to think that he could take a vessel and use us. Yeah. It's humbling. 
because we we know we know our shortcomings. Yeah. And so when God can use us to Him be all the glory. Yeah. Pride is the quickest way because it is the major tool of the enemy. That that's what caused him to fall. That is his his major modus operandi. Yeah. It is. And one of the, the one of the greatest. Well, it, it's almost like. One of, the, one of the greatest problems that we can have, one of the gr- greatest places of vulnerability can be right after God does something. And then the devil will come to you and say, boy, God was sure glad you were there. Wasn't, 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 never, wasn't, wasn't the universe just lucky that you were there at that moment because, you know, you're so anointed and you're so this and you're so that. I'm just merely a vessel that has learned to sit at the master's feet and let him pour in his oil. And it was his hands around me that poured it out on the people. Well, as long as we can remember that and, and keep that within the forefront of our minds. And the kingdom can come. <laughs> the kingdom can come unrestricted. See, yeah. what I want, what, what I hunger for, and what, the, what America needs and the world needs is a place that the kingdom can flow unrestricted, just like in the ministry of Jesus, unrestricted. That spiritual warfare, it's not, it's not going into the heavens and doing battle with whatever everybody's talking about. Uh, we can take it, one of these days we'll, we'll take Ephesians chapter 2 apart, put it back into context so, then, so that everybody can understand what's going on there. We, we don't astral project into the second heaven and do battle there. It's, it's, it's what's going on here. And to be his vessel to release his will in the earth. Lord, let me be nothing but a FedEx man. Let me be nothing but a UPS man bringing gifts to those that need freedom. Mm-hmm. You know, nobody runs up and hugs the UPS man and just thanks him for when something happens. It's because you, you thank the sender, and the sender is Jesus. Guys, this, this is where we need to be in this hour. If we pray, repent and fast tomorrow, God will move. If our expectation and our faith is there for the day of Pentecost, for God did for God's fire to fall, it'll fall. Mary, I believe that we're going to begin getting to the place, and I, I, I can't remember just exactly where the the story was, but there was uh, this Muslim chieftain had come, and it was a, it was a Christian village. And this this is a historical fact. I need I need to dig it all up. I was I was on another show, and uh, Casper brought it up. And I looked it up and verified it. This, this chieftain came and said, listen, I've, I've read your Bible. Now, your Messiah said that if you pray, a mountain will move. And so here's the deal. You pick one of you guys to pray. If this mountain over here doesn't move, I'm killing the entire village. And so they said, well, we need to have time to pray and fast about this. And they prayed and they fasted. And there was a uh, cobbler. The most humble man in town has said, we're asking you to pray. You're the most humble of us. He prayed. That mount moved over a kilometer. That chieftain got saved. God, this this is a historical fact. It, It happened over in the Middle East. That mount moved over a kilometer to save all the believers in that village. If God can move a mountain, because one guy prayed, God can change the heart of America. Yes, he can. And make us a country he can use for his will. His will in the earth. I'm believing that for all the filth and all the corruption and all the garbage that has come out of America, that the tide is going to reverse and righteousness is going yes, to Yes, I believe. The nation may not look anything like it does right now when God gets through with it, but righteousness is going to be established, and his glory is going to be here. And I Father, don't believe that it's, it's going to look the same. I believe that there's going to be such a shaking that it, it won't be the same landscape. No. And, Father, we just ask right now that you would move on all of us. Father, teach us spiritual warfare. Teach us to pray. Father, teach us to pray not to feel good, but teach us to pray to change hearts and to change nations and to change communities and to change landscapes. Teach us 
to bring your kingdom, to undo everything the enemy has done so that we can truly be like Jesus who went about doing good and destroying all the works of the enemy. Touch us where we need to be touched. Heal us where we need to be healed. Restore us. And, Father, cause us to be people of great faith, we ask in Jesus' name. Hi, friends. Pastor Mike Spaulding here to announce the Go Therefore 2022 conference. We are all witnesses to what has happened to America. Wickedness has overwhelmed our land. It is time for the body of Jesus Christ to come together and raise up the banner of our King. Now is the time for the Ecclesia to make our voice heard. We must bind the strong man in order to reclaim our land. Joining us this year to bring this much-needed clarion call are the following speakers. Dr. Sherry Tenpenny, James Spence, founder of Operation Heal America, Dr. John Diamond, host of America Unhinged on Brideon TV, Kenny C., host of The Rock with Kenny C., Derek and Sharon Gilbert, authors and hosts of award-winning programs on Skywatch TV and the PTL Network. Dr. Michael Lake, author of award-winning books, founder of Biblical Life College and Seminary, and host of Kingdom Intelligence Briefing. David Hevner, author, accomplished filmmaker and producer, director of The Last Evangelist TV series. Carl Gallops, senior pastor of Hickory Hammock Baptist Church and a top 60 Amazon best-selling author. Casper McLeod, pastor of Upper Room Fellowship, author, songwriter, guitarist, and portrait artist. Randy Conway, David Paxton, and Rick Hidalgo from the C2K Report. They'll provide a timely teaching on the steps you must take to protect yourself and your family from Babylon. Coach Dave Daubenmeyer from Pass the Salt Ministries. Neil Peterson, pastor of Harvest Revival Center and current candidate for governor of Ohio. Tom Dunn of Through the Black Ministries. And of course, myself, Dr. Mike Spaulding. Registration is now open at the conference website. Go GoThereforeConference.com Go GoThereforeConference.com Registration is still only $59. A recommended hotel is the best western Dayton Northwest in Englewood. The hotel is a short 20 minutes from the Dayton International Airport and the conference venue. Mention Go Therefore Conference for the special rate of $89. Book your rooms now as they will sell out. Go Therefore 2022 Conference Reclaiming the Land Binding the strong man. I'll see you there. Stay informed. Tune in to weekly podcasts by Dr. Michael and Mary Lou Lake to keep you informed, inspired, and empowered in the kingdom of God. Tune in to www.kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. That's kingdomintelligencebriefing.com. This video was made possible by our partners worldwide. Please prayerfully consider supporting the ministry that is preparing the remnant for the unfolding of end times prophecy. Send your offerings to Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri. That's Biblical Life, P.O. Box 160, Seymour, Missouri, 65746-0160. You can also donate online at store.biblical-life.com. That's store.biblical-life.com.